Hi guys, Sonny Dubbed here and today I'm doing a video review on the HP Omen 15, specifically the model with 144Hz refresh rate. Now I'm someone who's reviewed over 140 monitors and someone who has over 2000 hours of competitive Counter-Strike and plays pretty much on a weekly slash daily basis. Ultimately I wanted to find out could I play Counter-Strike on the go without having to worry about an external monitor being plugged into a laptop. Now this laptop in front of us has a 144Hz IPS display and can be found for around £950 in the UK slash in the US. Links will be down in the description below in case you're interested. I should also say that the laptop was provided on a short loan from Intel, the guys who make the dun 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 Intel Core i5 processor, which is found within this laptop. And no, this video isn't sponsored, it isn't paid in any way, it's completely independent and was really done for my own purpose, for me to be curious to see, could I game now on a laptop from someone who has a laptop which has a 60Hz display and can't stand it and therefore has to plug in an external 27 inch 1440p 144Hz monitor on it in order for me to actually feel comfortable to play any sort of games, let alone a competitive game like Counter-Strike. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Now first let's talk about the build quality and design. Now before we get into that, I just want to talk about the power brick because it's relatively small uh, and portable so therefore you can uh, shove it in your um, laptop bag pretty easily. Now the laptop itself has a very nice sort of design. It's got a X so Exhibit will be happy with the red design and also a carbon type of finish on it so it does give it kind of like a gamery look. Around the back you've got some vents as well which is useful for the laptop's cooling but more importantly we've got the ports. Now on the left hand side you've got a multi SD card reader, you've got a 3.5mm jack for your uh, headphones and your microphone which is great to see the uh, two separated. You've got a USB type uh, A uh, 3.1 port on the um, right hand, uh, left hand side and on the right hand side you've also got another one and you've got the DC input uh, for the power. Around the back however it's, it becomes a little bit more interesting because you've got an Ethernet port uh, which is useful to connecting directly to your router, another USB uh, type A port, HDMI, uh, mini display port and also USB type C Gen 2. Now the actual laptop itself weighs between 2.2 uh, .2 to 2.3 kilograms which means that it's relatively lightweight to carry around. You can carry it around with one hand. It's also relatively thin. Now as we open up the laptop what you'll be able to see is the touchpad is centered a little bit off center to the left hand side. And let's be honest if you're a real gamer you'll have a mouse, you'll never use a touchpad but it's uh, interesting to see see the placement of the touchpad a little off center. You've got a physical left and right button clicks which are useful to have which sound like that and then you've got a set of RGB backlit keys. Now it's not fully RGB backlit in other words individually lit but you've got different zones which you can customize through the HP Omen uh, software which comes included within, um, within the uh, laptop. Now there's also Banger and Olsen uh, speakers which I must say are pretty impressive when it comes to listening to uh, music or even your sounds on the go but if you're a gamer you're going to really want to connect this, um, this laptop to its headphone jack and therefore use your headphones or earphones or whatever have you to get better positional cues. Now speaking about the keyboard I just do want, I want to do a quick uh, typing test, well not typing test but for you guys to be able to hear the actual um, the keys itself so I'll just go quiet now. So in terms of the keyboard itself, it sounds pretty silent, it's not overly clicky or clackety um, and on top of that it does feel really nice to type on and specifically to game on. I had no problems pressing WSD in multiple different um, uh, ways and actually using it alongside my mouse as well. Now aside the build quality and design of the actual laptop, let's talk about the specs. Now in terms of processor, it's got Intel Core i5 9300H which runs at a core clock of 2.4 GHz, the boost clock is 4.1 GHz. In terms of memory, you've got 8GB of DDR4 RAM, which is plentiful in nowadays um, games or modern day shooters. In graphics card, it's got a discrete NVIDIA GTX 1650, um, which is decent, but I would have liked an RTX 2070 or something like that inside, but nevertheless at this price point, this is kind of what you should expect. Moving on from that, you've got a 256GB NVMe SSD, which provides 
blistering speeds and you'll be able to see benchmarks somewhere around here or something like that. Hopefully I've done the video editing right. And you've also got a one terabyte HDD. Now the one terabyte HDD is pretty slow. So therefore when I installed Call of Duty on it, Modern Warfare that is, um, the 128 gigabyte or 129 gigabyte install had to go on the hard drive. And therefore loading speeds were a lot slower versus Counter-Strike, which loaded up pretty instantaneously with that blistering speeds of an NVMe SSD. And of course, who could forget get the actual display. It's a 15.6 inch IPS anti-glare 144 hertz display uh, which I'm going to get into in just a bit. So those are pretty much the core specs. Now, of course, as I said before, the ports are very important if you want to connect it to an external display. But also in terms of the internal um, adapters, you've got a, um, a Wi-Fi card which is capable of 802.11 AC, which you're going to get plenty of fast speeds. And with Intel's um, technology that's built in, and by the way, this is me just seeing from what happened uh, when I was using the laptop wirelessly. I had no sort of latency issues whatsoever. On Counter-Strike, I was hitting at around 30 to 40 milliseconds of uh, latency, uh, which in comparison to my wired connection to my desktop PC was pretty much equivalent. So I was very much impressed in terms of the internal um, Wi-Fi capabilities of this laptop. Also, it's got Bluetooth built in. So if you want, have you got Bluetooth headphones or you've got uh, speakers or whatever you want to connect up to the laptop, you can connect them over Bluetooth as well. Now, I would also like to mention there is a built-in webcam at the very top of the screen, which is just around over here, as you will normally expect with most laptops and it's got a um, dual array of microphones. Now the webcam quality is pretty poor as you'll be able to see over here. There's a lot of kind of blurring um, and a lot of sort of image noise. However, the audio quality itself is actually very, very good to the point where if you were going to be doing in-call games, I wouldn't even have to worry about plugging in a de dedicated microphone. Of course, if you're a bit more serious gamer and you want someone or you want something to be like streaming with, then of course I'd recommend a external mic instead, be it USB or via 3.5mm jack. So now let's also move into synthetic benchmarks. Now, I'm not someone who really likes to rely on them, but it's also useful for you guys as the viewer to actually look at the synthetic bench box and compare it to your current system, be it a laptop or desktop uh, system, and see how it would compare. Here are screenshots of the, uh, the results and also the actual settings that I use to run this. Bearing in mind the uh, laptop has a full HD display, so it was run, run at a full HD display, and all the tools I used were completely free, so therefore you can also run them and install them yourself. Bear in mind that some of these benchmarks do take a lot of space, in other words, 1.2 gigabytes, for example, of space for one of the benchmarks, so just bear that in mind in case you're going to uh, download them. I actually want to talk about my real-world experiences. In this respect, I found that the Core i5 was perfectly fine for uh, multitasking, be it video editing or uh, photo editing via Photoshop and Sony Vegas, and also in terms of running multiple different Chrome tabs, and we all know Chrome likes hugging all that RAM and taking it to itself. So yes, if you're going to run 20 tabs, you might find that 8GB of RAM will kind of bottleneck you, but just bear in mind that is also somewhat of Chrome's fault. Now moving on from that, something I did also notice was actually the overall GPU and CPU temperature. They did get extremely high. And in this respect, the HP Omen laptop has a set of fans. Now the fans do ramp up and they can be heard. And it's something that was kind of disappointed me about the laptop. The fans were pretty loud to the point that with my open back headphones, it did take, take away from the overall experience. So here's a short little clip for you guys to actually hear the fans pretty much at full pelt. Good job, dude. So that's kind of the noise that you would kind of expect if you're going to be gaming. So for me, I was uh, gaming pretty much in that clip. I was re gaming for around two hours and then went on to game for another two hours, pretty much solidly. So four hours gaming uh, stretch there. Late night gaming sessions are awesome. But anyway, all I can say over there is the fact that you do hear the fans. And it's something that a lot of reviewers, just generally speaking, um, for laptops, not just specifically for the HP Omen, they just refuse to kind of comment on. But yet that is an extremely important factor as it will take away and kind of deter you from your game. How did the uh, laptop perform for the games that I played? And the two games that I play at the moment are Call of Duty Modern Warfare and also um, Counter-Strike. Now those two games, I must say, I was very impressed with. Let's start with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The visuals were beautiful. The Full HD IPS display really um, kind of 
kind of came out to its fullest over here. Now, despite me not hitting around 100 um, hertz or 100 FPS, at around 80 to 60 FPS is where I kind of was um, hovering at with my given settings. Again, I can achieve higher FPS if I want to, but I think that'll detract from the visuals that I got from Call of Duty. So in this respect, playing the campaign, and I must say the campaign of Call of Duty, the, the latest Modern Warfare, is fantastic. So if you haven't played it, make sure you go check it out. I really love the campaign. I played it through, and then I played it again through the laptop just to experience it at a different difficulty. And I must say I had a lot of fun. I did die quite a lot of times, but anyway, that was it was all part of the fun. And playing that Call of Duty kind of classic single player campaign really did bring it out the best with this laptop because I enjoyed the visuals with that IPS display. Something I couldn't say if I had a TN display or a 60Hz display which would have um, which would be capped. Um, moving on from that we had Counter-Strike and ultimately this is the question that I kind of wanted to answer. Could I play competitive Counter-Strike on the go without having to worry about my monitor? And the answer to that question is yes. And I'm really happy to say that because I had no problems whatsoever, whatsoever playing Counter-Strike on the laptop with its display. Now, yes, it has an IPS display, so some people might be saying it's not the fastest, but I actually personally game on the IPS display. Most of the time, people will look at response time of an IPS and be like, oh, it's slower than a TN, but then you don't actually look at the input lag, which is actually potentially one of the more important factors of how you move your mouse and click to how the actual monitor, or the, let's say in this respect, the laptop's monitor will respond. And in, in my own experience with my own um, gaming mouse, I found that the, um, the monitor on the laptop responded flawlessly. It really was great. The hardest thing, to be quite honest with you, was adjusting to the size of the monitor. 15.6 was actually pretty small for me, so I had to kind of stretch it and look closer and closer to the laptop. It took me about three to four games of um, competitive to actually kind of get adjusted to the uh, monitor size, and I play at 4.3 stretched, um, so it does take a little bit getting used to on a smaller display versus playing on a 27 inch 1440p display. Nevertheless, while I, while I did get used to it, I was hitting those shots, my spray control was still pretty good, and I didn't really feel that I was deviating from, you know, having a bad experience. If anything, I was having a great experience, and the fact that I could have that experience wherever I wanted to have it, without having to rely on my main monitor, was a great sort of feel to me. And something that can't be said for a lot of other sort of laptops out there. In terms of the monitor itself, um, of the laptop, it does really look lovely. In terms of the benchmarks you'll be able to see over here, I ran it through DisplayCal, which is normal um, display benchmarking tool that I use, and it does a decent job. It's a kind of average IPS display. It's not either amazing nor is it, nor is it poor. So overall, the display, the 144 hertz um, refresh rate and the IPS display combined, combined for a fantastic gaming experience. So now onto my verdict. Would I recommend the HP Omen 15? Is it something that I would see myself buying? Ultimately, yes. I did like the laptop and I will say I'm going to be sad uh, sending it back because when I did play with it, I didn't feel the need to kind of reach back to my uh, desktop PC. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my desktop PC. Core i7, um, RTX 2080 Super, it's quite hard to beat with a 1440p display going to a full HD laptop with a Core i5 and a GTX 1650. But nevertheless, it was a great experience and something that I could see myself personally using and personally gaming, which I was like, that's great. So the next time I look for a laptop, if I do go and buy one, I will look for one with a full HD display and also a 144 hertz refresh rate. And in this respect, the only con that I found about the HP Omen, other than potentially the price, which 950 pounds can be seen as pretty expensive, is the fact that its fans go pretty loud. Other than that, they honestly were, there were honestly no um, negatives that I could really draw out from the laptop, which is kind of surprising because I really expected to get a lot more negatives. It, there's really not much to it. So there we have it. Can you play competitive Counter-Strike? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, let's do it, America. <laughs> anyway, if you've enjoyed this unbiased, unpaid, independent review, give it a like. Subscribe, favorite, and share if you want to see more of it. It helped the channel grow, and you know I can't make these videos without you guys uh, doing that. So 
Let me know in the comments below what you think about this type of laptop, if it's something that you own or you're thinking about getting this laptop or this video has helped you, whatever it is, just let me know in the comments below, it would be lovely to, to hear your thoughts and I do read every single comment. Alright guys, I've been totally dubbed, take care and bye bye.